Thank you for listening to Sermon Snippets with Max Taylor. It's our goal here to study what the Bible says and then take the true meaning of Scripture as it was originally intended and find application to our daily lives so that it will change the way that we live. And today we're looking at a very convicting passage in James chapter 4. So if you find your place there, look down at James 4 verse 13. The Bible says, Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. That's a stark image there, isn't it? It says, For that ye ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. In this passage we see a very common mindset, mindset that pervades most of our culture today. It's it's just the common typical way that people think. And that is about the here and now and focused on the things of this world. And the Bible tells us very clearly to love not the things of the world. And if any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We're not supposed to love the world. And this passage comes to us in stark contrast, telling us that we should not make our choices based on how people around us make their choices. But we should instead have the mindset of Christ. So we're going to look at a couple of different uh, key words in this verse And then we're going to take some application from it at the end. Let's notice first off this common mindset that that he talks about. He says in verse 13, Go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Now it's very interesting that he says, ye that say. This shows that this was already the way the people were thinking. This thinking was typical and the people he's addressing. He says, you people that are already saying this, he's saying you already have this mindset. It's it's already uh, found home in your own hearts. Not, not only is it common to the world outside, but it's also typical in and amongst yourselves. So he's saying everyone thinks this way, even some of you, you say this. And what were they saying? Well, they were saying today or tomorrow. And when it comes to making plans, he's saying that this, this type of thinking is very trivial. It's, it's the mindset of, well, today I might do this, and uh, tomorrow I might do something else. Or, you know, I might start this eventually. It's a very um, lackadaisical attitude towards planning and towards decision making. Basically, we decide, you know, whatever's convenient, that's what I'll do. And he says, this is the typical mindset that you have you say today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a city and this is a very temporal way of thinking to make decisions based off of the location to to make decisions based off of taste or what you like why do you live in this city that you live is it because that's just something that, that's nice to you? Or is it because you view it as a calling from God? See, he's getting at the very core of how we make our decisions. They would also say things like, we'll continue there a year. Basically, their thinking was temporary. It was all based on their own plans. They didn't consider God's will in the situation. And they, they said, we will buy and sell. Right there in verse 13. And this is a... This is thinking that has to do with trade and with commerce and with business. And he said, your ultimate goal is to get gain. It's all about your treasure. And Jesus tells us that where our treasure is, there will our heart be also. What are some of the things that people today live for? I was thinking about this. Maybe people today, they they live for travel. And, you know, maybe maybe they want to go visit or they want to go live in these exotic places or... 
people today live for their retirement. You know, they spend their whole life setting aside money for their retirement. And they just want to get to that point in life where they can stop working and take it easy. Or maybe we, we live for working the dream job, you know, doing what we love or what we, uh, what we enjoy. Some people work towards becoming wealthy. Uh, some people might live for good food. I mean, I enjoy good food. But all those things, they're all temporal. They're all temporary. They're of this world. And that's the common mindset that he calls out. Let's look next in verse 14. We see his condemnation the condemnation from God. He says, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. And there's basically three thoughts here. He says, first off, tomorrow is unpredictable. Why are you living for the here and now when you don't even know what's going to be on tomorrow? And secondly, your life is but a, a vapor. He says, for your life is even a vapor. The word even there, it means only. Your life is, is just a vapor. That's all it is. It's nothing much. And thirdly, he says, nothing in this world will last. Your life, it appears for a while and then vanishes away. There's nothing left to it. It's a stern condemnation from God. Why are you living this way? Why do you determine your decisions based on such temporal things that don't really matter? And then he gives us a call to action. God wants us to find his will for our lives and do it. The thing that challenges me the most from this passage is the emphasis on things that have bearing on eternity. What will you do today that will matter in Christ's kingdom? You realize how essential our lives right now are. Life right now is not just an opportunity for us to start a relationship with God, but the things that we do right now also determine our positions in Christ's kingdom. When he comes, after he raptures us, and then after the seven-year tribulation, we, we will come back with him to establish his kingdom. And I was reading recently about the life of David and all that he did during his reign as king for the Lord. And you realize that the Bible says David will rule over Jerusalem during Christ's millennial reign. This life matters, folks. What we do today has such eternal value. That's why we shouldn't waste our time with this typical, trivial approach to life that we're just going to do whatever's convenient. We're just going to make decisions based on what we like and what our plans look like and how we're going to make money or, or live a comfortable life. Guys, the correct mindset, he says that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. We should be consumed with finding God's will. In verses 16 and 17, he gives us a couple cautions. He says, first off, don't rest on previous accomplishments. And then he says, don't neglect what you are aware of that you should be doing. So I I just want to ask as we close, how is your personal Bible study? your personal time with the Lord. You know that that is the most important way you can use your time in this life. I have the privilege of being part of a Bible conference for the next few weeks and listening to somewhere around 100 sessions. And the thing that's sticking out to me is that becoming a student of the Bible should be our number one priority. We have to know what the Bible teaches, and that takes work. It takes studying the grammar. It takes studying the timelines, the geography, looking at the maps. How well do you know your Bible? You know, that is one of the most important things you can do with your time. And just like these two cautions tell us in the last two verses here, don't rest on your previous accomplishments. Never be satisfied with your where your Bible study's at. You should always be trying to grow. And don't neglect what you know you should do. You know you should study your Bible. So what does your, ba- your daily Bible study time look like? This life is so short, we should spend it on things that matter. Becoming a student of the Bible should be our priority. And, and that applies perfectly to what this passage teaches us. I hope this is a challenge for you to capture every moment in your life. This is a call to action. The very thing that drives your choices, that determines your decisions, what you do on a daily basis, should be those things that last for eternity.